Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Rin and today I'm about to solve all of your art problems. Your dormant neurons are about to be activated. Bitty little eyes will see things that they've never seen before. This is Mouseport! 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 <laughs> what the fuck was that? Ooh. Never allow me to cook again, anyway. So I asked my followers about what they're struggling with art most. And the response was pretty fucking crazy. Y'all are in the trenches. But I got the solution for you. Have you tried BetterHelp? BetterHelp is an online learning community who keeps you safe from hackers. <sighs> We're not there yet. But we will get our first sponsor on this channel. One day at least. Before we get into it, this video is gonna be about a large variety of subjects. So I've handled the navigation for you basically. It's all timestamped. Just jump around like press hop hop. Also, in case you haven't noticed already, the audio is about to be shit. I don't got a microphone yet, but bear with me. If this does not flap astronomically, I'ma get one. Without further ado, let's get into it. This feels stupid, but basically zero experience. But I struggle with even studying. Listen, I assure you, you are not stupid. There are many, 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 many other people who are struggling with the same thing. It is very easy to be overwhelmed by a new thing. You've already taken the first step of deciding to start drawing. Now you just gotta do it. Listen, there is nothing that you should be scared of. Art is supposed to be fun. It is a hobby. I'll be in my room painting. Homo things. Listen, art is accessible. It is not this grandiose thing that only a select few can do. You can do it. Even those experienced artists that you do not understand how they're doing, whatever the fuck they're doing is like magic and whatever the fuck I'll never do it. No, they are there not by talent alone, but by hard work. Work that you can do as well. Listen, I get you. We all live on the internet and the internet is home to a whole slew of intellectually and ideologically molested gerbils. There's always gonna be that one motherfucker that's gonna try and gatekeep this whole operation to themselves and their fucking club of pretentious losers that are NPCs in all other aspects of their life. So they must, they must hold onto the art with their teeth. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, no, no. I spent so much money. I spent so much time learning everything. The color theory, the fucking uh, volumes. Your, your, your art doesn't have volume. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, just to sound pretentious, like they know what the fuck they're talking about. And they don't. Trying to be like, well, you can't, you can't just wake up one day and call yourself an artist. You can't do that. What if a firefighter woke up one day and decided to be a firefighter? Bitch, people would die. People would die. It's literally not the same thing. How dumb do you have to be to use that analogy? Dumbass analogy. Hold one. What were we talking about? Ah, yes, feeling overwhelmed by the whole art shit. You know, man, just take it easy, have fun. Baby steps, baby steps. Let's speak about some practical stuff. First of all, if you've drawn a bit traditionally, transitioning to digital is gonna feel jarring. We have all been through this. Pen is slipping and sliding. All the user interfaces are confusing. You feel like you're cheating whenever you use a fucking tool. It's just not a good time, but that's fine. Just gotta push through it, keep practicing, don't give up. Everyone has gone through this. I will say, if you have an iPad... Woo! A matte screen protector is pretty mandatory. It makes it a lot easier. I could not draw without a matte screen protector. The pen ends slipping and innate sliding no more. Then, for the user interface, listen. It's a matter of getting used to it and trying out all the tools. Also, don't be afraid to move your workspace around to suit your needs. There's a couple of top G tools that you should be wanting around. First of all, invert image. Since our eyes get used to the image, when we flip it, everything that we drew fucked up gets exposed. It's gonna be a bit of a jump scare, so be prepared. I used to hate doing this, bro. It tanked my self-esteem. I thought I was a shit artist, which it probably was, but that's not the point because it still happens to this day. When I flip the canvas, it looks a bit fucked up, which is why you need to take advantage and make it look not fucked up. And how you do that? Using liquid fiber. Select shit, move it around, distort it, do whatever you need to do to make it look nice. Using the tools at your disposal is so sexy. Another thing you absolutely must follow. 
Please name your layers, please. I implore you. I used to hate doing this too, but it saves so much time. You'll see, she can get very chaotic. You may be like, nah, I'm built different. I can't keep track of all of these layers. Layer 20 has the right eye, and then on layer 78, I drew the left foot. Oh, it's all, it's all. Mega mind. But you're still a beginner, and the thing with beginners, y'all tend to be a bit inconsistent. Y'all be drawing for five days straight, and then you ghost poor procreate. You come back after a month, you're feeling artistic again. You saw a tutorial, you wanna try something on that one piece of artwork that you are doing, but you open it up and it's diarrhea in the layers. Now you're going through all of them, making them visible, invisible, trying to figure out which is which, what is what. But at this point, the only thing you know for certain is that you can't imagine how inconvenient traveling was before she invented blue powder. But even if you manage to peel away every piece of bean and corn and whatever and make sense of the situation, you'd still have wasted a whole lot of time. So just name everything, okay? Clean sketches for lazy people specifically. Babes, laziness is the most underrated human quality. Think of any great innovation. It was done because someone was too lazy. So as an artist, especially if you're trying to be a professional, you always aim to make pretty shit with less work in the least amount of time possible. For line art, it's important to have the right tools. You want to find a submissive brush that's going to listen to your pressure inputs. If I press on my fucking pencil, that bitch bare fucking bleed. Oh, but you may not like that though. You may like a more digital, clean looking feel. Just pick something that really complements your style and that you're very comfortable with. Because if you're comfortable, you're going to be more efficient. Me? Personally, I don't fuck with that though. Because I have this weird condition where if I see too neat of a line art, I get scared. But you do you. It's good to experiment though. How are you going to know what you like if you don't experiment? A lesbian told me that once. Who knows where I'd be today without that advice? Ooh. Now that you've chosen your weapon, there are two ways you can approach this. You can either take the most common approach of doing a sketch and then doing the line art on top, or you can skip the sketch and road dog the line art. If you're a complete beginner, I would not recommend it. Save your self-esteem. There's a reason why doing the sketch first is so popular. You don't have to worry about the structure. You've already figured all of that out and now you just gotta do the line art. If you've got a good grasp on anatomy and you consider yourself to be an intermediate, give it a shot. It's very, very fun. It makes for very organic looking drawings and it gets you all loose in the caboose. The secret is to keep your lines intentional. Put your chicken scratching grubby little claws away you better mean what you drew because you ain't drawing over this one i'm not here to hate on chicken scratching but for some of you the chicken scratches are so small you're straight up doing pointillism you may not be ready to hear it but the bigger the line the better if you're having trouble with that try to drive the motion from your elbow not from your wrist alternatively zoom out draw while you are zoomed out using the tools available to you is such a sleigh However you choose to do your line art, there is something you must know about this girl. It's got a dark secret, and that is... It ain't even there at all. What's the line art in the room with us right now? My man Da Vinci once said there is no outline to the form. Fumato, blah, 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 chiaroscuro, blah, 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 blah. Listen, that is also an option you got. You can just straight up not... Do the line art. That's how the Renaissance old masters used to do it. There is a more realism oriented way of doing it. Me, I don't fuck with that. I like my line art to be bold, expressive, and usually completely black. Who the fuck threw that motherfucking busted ass goddamn Adidas? Ooh, I felt all them side eyes on me. Using pure black is kind of a taboo in the art world with some people, but it gives it that. Woomph, that flavor. I'm a non-conformist. I'm a rebel. Listen, it's perfectly okay not to follow the rules as long as it's intentional. That is what makes your style yours. Wait, you said that it's important to know that there's no lines. Yeah, it's important to know that you are representing the outlines of volumes and sometimes the shadows on those Volumes. You should try to convey form and volume. But don't overdo with the line art. Don't draw every single facet of the form. 
It's a bit dependent on your own art style, but simplifications are a thing for a reason. Struggling right now with color palettes. Like, how do you know which colors work with which? Listen, color theory is a monster. Oh shit. Here we go again. Automobile gangsta with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm in a tanka color, Willy Wonka. Hotter than a Middle Eastern climate. Violent. <clears throat> anyway, we were talking about color theory. Pay attention. How dare you be distracted? There's a couple of cheat codes that you can use to get into the ballpark of a harmonious looking illustration. First, pick a color, any color. Then, just stay within that square. There is a monochromatic palette. It's given CEO. It's given elegance. It's given you can only do this if you know values really well. It's also given a little bit boring. Okay, maybe you want another color. You, why not go completely across, completely opposite? and stay within those two squares. That is a complementary color palette. It's giving contrast, interesting, a contrarian, but maybe that's looking a bit too aggressive. Maybe you want something a bit more harmonious. Just pick the two colors that are next to your color. They're already besties, they're already together. This is an analogous color palette. It's a very chill, very natural one. You can also draw a triangle for a triatic color palette. This can look very, very nice. I would use that third color as only an accent though, a bit of a pop. You can also go split complementary or tetratic. If you can't remember the names, don't. But know that if you remember the names, you will likely be able to figure out the color palette. Because, well, they're named like that for a reason. Tetratic means four, triatic means three, analogous means similar. Split complementary, it's like you go complementary, but then you go split, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Monochromatic means one color, so if you can remember these, you can remember the color palettes. But, as I said, this only gets you in the ballpark of where you need to be. A few things to help you out though. Always paint on a background. Try and make it pretty saturated. That's already half the battle. Your eyes will tell you what you need to know. Color perception works on you too not only on the viewers. Another thing people don't understand about color theory. You should never use these colors equally. You should have one or two that are mostly in there and the other ones should be more muted. They should be working together, not fighting each other for dominance like the tongues in a fanfic on Wattpad. <laughs> Make sure you color everything on a different layer so you can adjust and play around later. Also, having a lot of desaturated beiges, grays, just neutrals is gonna make any other color they use pop a lot. If you want something to look more desaturated, move towards its complementary. This can be very, very overwhelming at first, so don't stress yourself out. You can simply draw everything with their obvious colors and then use a couple of overlay layers to tie everything together. If you wanna exercise and experiment and find what you like, just do a sketch and color it in a bunch of different ways and put them next to each other, see what you like. How to draw clothes. Listen, first of all, don't be drawing any nonsensical shit. Material is a physical object. The folds should be flowing together. They should be pushing each other out of the way. It should be a cohesive thing. You can default to a couple of shapes to help you out. Like a Y shape, an N shape. See how easy that is. Try drawing the clothes without drawing the character naked first. Who the fuck threw that motherfucking busted ass goddamn Adidas? It is so much quicker. Just use your imagination to imagine the body. Imagine the volume. Just like I imagined that I'm gonna get a sponsor on this channel. It's not actually there. But it helps you out, doesn't it? Drawing the body first may also trick you into drawing the clothes too flat. The clothes are a different volume that is on top of the body. They should be lifting off. Some of y'all don't even follow the volume that you've drawn. How are you gonna draw an arm whose basic shape is a tapered down cylinder and then drape the fabric as if it's sitting on a table? The physics are not physics in. Clothes are really, really fun to draw once you get into your head that they have volume and that the material should be interacting with itself and with the volume that is draped over. So a couple of fun areas where fabrics tend to do fun things, also known as tension points, are the shoulders, the armpit of the forearm, the crotch, the knees and wherever the fabric ends. That being said, it matters a lot what sort of fabric it is. If it's a thick fabric, there's gonna be less folds and the folds that are there are gonna be hella thick. If the material is thin and soft, there's gonna be many, many folds. Again, use references. I know you don't wanna, but it's necessary. I know you're too lazy, but it's necessary. How do I find my art style? 
listen, I know you may be fucking tired of hearing everyone say that it's just gonna come with practice. Busted ass, goddamn Adidas. But I am sadly here to tell you that it is true. I don't think you can manifest this one, bestie. In the beginning, chances are that your art style is gonna be an amalgamation of your favorite artists or art styles, but the wish version. And that's perfectly fine. We learn by copying others. Everyone has done it like that. As you start getting some confidence and you start getting more independent, you're gonna notice that you like drawing certain things in certain ways. That's only the beginning, you're metamorphosizing into a butterfly. You're gonna start picking and choosing elements that you like and it's gonna come together like a beautiful tapestry. But again, it's not gonna happen overnight and it's not something that you can force. It's just gonna click one day. It's like, ah, this is really aesthetic to me right now. This is giving. But to know what you like and what you find aesthetic, you need to experiment a lot. So don't be afraid. Try new things. Homo things. Don't, don't be tied up with one style. Shading in the right spot with the right color and the shading in general. Okay, so the way that I usually do shading is I get all my flats in a folder. Remember, being organized is sexy and efficient. Then I select all of that. Then on a different layer that's on top of the base colors, create a mask with that selection so that whenever I draw, I don't have to worry about the outlines. A lot of people are scared of masks and they don't know what the fuck they are, but it's really easy. It's as if you had a piece of paper and then you put a piece of paper with a hole in it on top. You can only draw where the hole is. The hole is the selection that you make. Some people prefer using clipping layers, but that's kind of the beta way. It works, but it's not very efficient and they're not very adjustable. Going back to the shading process, I do all of my shading on one fucking layer. Stop making different shading layers for different surfaces. Also, initially, don't worry about the colors of the shades. Just use one color and worry about blocking in the shades correctly. We are artists, we don't got brain power. I usually go for an orangey color. That's gonna end up being the color of the shade of the skin. And I block everything in. So remember to zoom out a lot. Think of the bigger picture. Think of shades in shapes. Don't think of it as, as this flat thing. Think about volume. Think about representing volume. Also, a rule that applies to everything in art is to go from chaos to detail. Stop beginning with the detail. I know you get mesmerized by the detail in other people's arts, but they did not begin with the detail. That's the, that's the flourishes. That's like the easiest part. So once you get the foundation in the detail, it's going to come much easier. So since we use only one color, everything looks kind of kind of boring in it and orangey and stuff. So I go into my base colors and I select whichever one I want to adjust. And then I clip a layer to my shading layer and I adjust it. Colors that you pick for your shades are gonna be dependent on the color of the thing that you are shading. Try to make it saturated enough because people with shading, they just think of something desaturated, of gray, but that's not at all the case. So experiment a lot. Okay, baby girls, this is gonna be it for today. There are many more things I wanted to talk about, but these ones were the most popular. This is our first video, so if you want more of them, make sure to subscribe and like and comment and boost the shit out of this video. Thank you for making it to the end though, you've already done a lot. Thank you for putting up with the audio. You are uh, very sexy. Bye. Video is over now. Over now. Go find something else to watch. I'll just watch this video again.